Hello and welcome. So I wanted to make a quick video today showing how to use Rainbow to turn a basic uh, circuit like this, which is a bit crusher, into a VST that you can use in you know your preferred DAW or in Max. So let's start by making a new patch and bringing in Rainbow. So Rainbow works a lot like Gen. It's sample, uh, single sample accurate and it uh, is sort of its own uh, patching system within Max. And why you would want to use it is because you have all these uh, export targets. So C++, potentially use the code in a game engine, um, really anything. Uh, or as a web export, you could put it right into an, um, a website. And then for our purposes today, the audio plugin export, which you can use uh, if you have a Mac, it's, you can uh, export it as an audio component. And it uses Juice to do the basic UI or VST3 if you're on Windows. So I'm working on Windows today. So I'm going to make this bit crusher here in Rainbow. So let's start. We'll just build it from left to right. It's a fairly simple. Uh, and by the way, this was taken from uh, a website called ADSR.com. So let's start. So we want an inlet and we want an audio inlet. So in tilde one we're going to make it stereo uh, but we can just sort of duplicate it when we're all done so first what we want to do is take the input and um, so this is our audio input and we want to um, multiply it uh, by two to the power of how many bits in our target bit rate we have so let's start with just a simple multiplication tilde object. So this is one difference in Gen is that we do have data rate as well in Rainbow as opposed to Gen. So you do need the tilde to show when it's audio. Um, so our input will go straight in there. And now we want to have our um, our bit rate or target bit rate. So we'll make a parameter for that. And these params are what show up in the um, user interface for the VST when we export it. So let's say this is bit depth. And let's put a default of 16. We'll put at minimum of two and at maximum of uh, 64. And now it's two to the power of the bit depth, right? Because of the way that uh, sort of the binary operators work, it's um, uh, the, the base two binary system. So it's two to the power of the number of bits, bits to get the bytes converted into bits. So let's just bring, uh, what do we need? We need a signal for two, right? So let's do sig two. And then that goes into a power object. And our parameter will go into this side. Now, because of the way um, bits and bytes work, in computers, um, there's usually one byte that is reserved for, I believe it's a, if it's a positive or negative number. Um, so let's go ahead and subtract one from our bit depth as it comes in. And so now we have two to the power of the bit depth. And so we want to multiply the incoming signal by that number. Um, so now to quantize within there, we could use the round object or the floor object. I'm going to use the floor object, floor tilde, input value um, to the next lowest integer. So now we've sort of quantized this. So we have no floats. And now we just want to divide it again by this same uh, value here to bring it back between the negative one and one. Okay, so that's our that's this first part of the of the uh, diagram here we've completed and now we want to uh, deal with sample rate um, so qu quantizing it essentially so for that we're going to need another parameter and let's call it sample rate resolution resolution yeah uh, let's do a default of 44,100 at minimum of one 
at max of let's do 96,000. So now we're going to need a latch object, which will let through a sample um, at the at the, the 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 speed of samples per second that that is given by this sample resolution parameter. So let's go for the latch object input here. So I think it's a non-zero here to take the sample, and then this is a sample to be latched. So we can do this simply by using a counter and have it counting. Uh, so that's how many uh, amount to add per sample. So we want that to be one. So it's just counting samples. Um, so we'll need that as a signal. So in in gen, this would just be a one, right? And in rainbow, it has to be this sig tilde, signal tilde one. And let's um, give it a maximum count uh, of the inverted, um, an inversion of this. So if we divide, so if we take the input and divide it by 96,000, what did I do wrong there? Oh yeah, the space is in the wrong place. Uh, so if we do the reverse division, bring that parameter in and have that be the max count. And then the flag from the counter can go to the latch there. And then I believe we are finished. So from here we can go out tilde one. And so we have, we now have our mono. Well, first let's get those parameters out. So our bit depth and our sample resolution. Bring it in here. Let's bring in a live dot gain here. We'll just send it out both. And let's do, I have DAC loop back on five and six. So I'll need to do that in order for it to be heard by OBS. Oh, just needed to be initialized. All right. Let's bring this way down. So you can hear all the artifacts happening from the low sample rate. Put the bit depth way down. There, we have a ni nice bit crush dis digital distortion sound. And these can be changed in real time, which is nice too. Okay, so we have our effect. And now let's uh, duplicate it into stereo and export it as a VST. And now it should be working in stereo. So let's test that, let's be sure. Oh, of course I need it to, there we go. Okay, so we have our bit crusher and it's ready to be exported as a VST and then we'll bring it into, uh, into our DAW. So let's select the um, audio plugin target. Taylor Brook Music and my manufacturer code, Taylor Brook Music V, why not? It's an effect rather than an instrument and I have a sort of a default directory I'm exporting it to. Uh, I have no presets, so I don't need to do that. Um, sample dependencies, I have none either, so I don't need that. And polyphony is linked, so okay, great. So this should be it. So VST3 for Windows, if one was using a Mac audio unit, if they want it to be usable in Logic. And I believe there's some additional steps you might need to check, check there as as well to make it so Logic uh, identifies it as a as a trustable piece of code. So anyway, VST3 for window is very simple. Let's export it. Must have at least one uppercase. Okay, so let's do T Taylor Brook Music V, all uppercase. 
There we go. So it actually does a build on the cloud. Um, so it it's not as fast as it could be. The build is finished. We've successfully exported to target. So let me just open that in the file system. So here we are uh, with, what did we save it as again? Let me go back to that. Oh, I just called it rainbow plugin. All right, so be more creative next, next time. So um, here it is, contents. There's our VST3. So in my case, my VST3s are kept under local program files, common VST3. Now it won't open if you put it in the VST2 um, uh, location, at least for me, it didn't work. So let me copy that into there and yes. And so now I'm going to launch uh, PreSona Studio. Great. And now if I bring in my effects, if I look in my effects, I should be able to find my name. Yep. And there's rainbow plugin and bring it on there and here it pops up. And there we have our two parameters. Let's use it. Right there it is in our DAW, working fine, and that's it's as simple as that. So beyond this, you can um, find on uh, on Max MSP or rather Cycling Seventy Four's GitHub. There is more information on how to um, do custom user interfaces using uh, Juice J U C E um, after a C plus plus export. Uh, but it's quite functional as it is. Now I would love to see some upgrades in terms of a sort of automatic transitions to the user interface. So just, you know, the, the inclusion of things like toggles would be great or uh, dials. I mean, all I really need are, um, yeah, toggles and dials. Would be great to be able to type into these boxes as well rather than them always being sort of dragging. So in any case, there's there are some improvements there, but it's incredibly easy, incredible functional, uh, and it's great to be able to turn uh, these simple effects into VSTs and use them in your DAW. So um, that's about all I wanted to show today. Thanks.